Hell That's the yeah. Sean Goodnight. I we guess should do, do it. like a deep dive, like top ten worst uh, keynotes. Keynotes. Because I feel like that's something that we are, well, maybe just Rocco, have a little bit of an expertise on. Because not everybody watches keynotes true. or remembers how truly bad the awful ones are. Um, it's a good little piece of cringe history. I think that Michael Bay one might be my favorite. What's the cringiest keynote, uh, in your opinion? Of the ones that we were just talking about, I always just think of that Jamie Kennedy yeah, Jamie one. Jamie Kennedy one. It was so bad. Not the um, our friend dancing on stage uh, for Just Dance. Kasim? Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, I mean, that was. Mm, yeah. I, I mean. That was just a meme that yeah. came out of one keynote, but it wasn't like a terrible keynote. I always think of like, yeah, PlayStation's had some funny moments like Ridge Racer. Yeah. That sticks out as like an awkward moment, but it didn't. It wasn't like a shit keynote. I feel like Nintendo's never had a bad one, but they're smart. Uh, they don't do them live. Oh, really? Uh, Wii Music with the oh. with Ravi drums, the microphone. <laughs> oh yeah, we made fun oh, of that, that was with a, a truth phone. Yeah. Uh, mm. Well, no, that well, we did we did one that we did a video that was just on that keynote. When we did like, uh, I think there, it was 2008, and we did a video every day for IGN of every day of E3 of the and, keynotes. Uh, yeah. There's one video we did that was just Nintendo's presentation. They had that. They had the We Speak microphone. Yeah, where you would just yell stuff into a. Spe- I, I don't understand that solution to. It's a weird peripheral. Chat. There was that. Uh, the woman came out and talked about her ski accident or something. <laughs> I don't remember why she was there. I don't remember what that was, but a, a woman came out and talked about how she hurt herself or something. I can't I can't remember. Um, there were like 20 things in that presentation that were like, oh, man, this is really not good. But now they do them pre-recorded yeah. so they can yeah. edit out any awkwardness or yeah. go, hey, that, get Carol here, uh, you know, a seltzer, have her. Oh, I cut. just I just remember a couple years later, they did the one where they showed Skyward Sword for the first time. Huh. And. And then remember they showed like the motion controls that Link had, and it was like, wasn't it like it was like freaking out? It was like, <laughs> like yeah, all wasn't glitched like going. out. And I and I think I want to say that was the end of it. I feel like after that it was like, okay, we need to pre-record these. Too much writing on, too much you know money is writing on this going smoothly. I yeah, I can't keep remember, it in our control. That's I can't smart. remember if that was literally the last live one they did. I feel like it was, but I could be wrong. But I just remember thinking, like, oh, man, they can't afford to do that. Um, but I think Microsoft is kind of... Are they the only ones still kind of doing that? I mean... does play? I can't remember the last time PlayStation did. Um, I mean, obviously, they weren't at E3 the last couple of years, but I can't remember. Um, I miss yeah. awkward stage interactions, like when we, yeah. when we used to go to the Game Developers Choice Awards. Yeah. We'd do videos for them. We'd be in the audience, uh, and there'd be some game developer would get up there and win something, and then he would, like, curse inappropriately or take his shirt off or propose to his wife. All three of those things have happened that we've been in the audience for. And it's always just, like, secondhand embarrassment for that uh, because you can hear the whole room around you kind of groaning. Like, oh. Yeah. All right. I don't care about that stuff. Uh, I mean, I feel like... Maybe that was weird at the time, but looking back, I don't know. It was like a community of people. Yeah. You know, it made it seem like everybody there kind of knew each other and it was very communal and like a bunch of friends hanging out going to GDC because I saw that 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 developer took his shirt off later that night, you know, and we talked about it. He's like, yeah, it was just, you know, my team dared me to do that. I wasn't going to do it. And I was like, hey, you're just fucking with people. (laughs) (laughs) GDC always felt like more of like a, a group of friends as a as opposed to any other award show like watching the grammys on tv and maybe it was because i was there in the room not watching you felt it like on you're TV. part of that community yeah so um i agree at the time i was like oh, this is kind of cringy but now i look back on those moments and those are the moments i remember most fondly that's from true those award actually shows. those are all the ones i do recall i have vivid memories of all those things because i think it it had this cringe element at the time 
yeah. but it is it's that nervous energy of some live thing happening yeah that's unexpected the the thing that makes me the saddest to think about is i've probably sat and watched iwata talk more than anyone i know like we, every time we went to gdc or what anytime nintendo would do something uh satoru iwata would yeah. talk and i re- i think of how many of those talks i sat there like oh man like some of them would be like okay this is very developer focused you know what i mean Technical. like i would go thinking like oh they're it's nintendo they're going to talk about something cool and it's like i I'm, I'm not the audience for this you know what i mean so ha- there's so many of those where i sat like oh man this is boring like oh god and now it's like oh now that he's gone i'm like oh man like you know, it's like I, 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 I honestly, I miss as a as a as a spokesperson for Nintendo. I'm like, oh, I wish I, you know, that guy was a cool guy. I wish I would have appreciated that more. But I get, you know, I'm not a game developer, so I couldn't really always hang with what they were talking. He's about. trying to teach you how to render grass effectively. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, I I can't uh, remember the last like live one or live thing like that that I actually like went to um what what about what was the award show where they had like the whole section empty and you were sat oh oh, oh yeah the the video the the video game awards that spike tv well it's was, not spike yeah, it's anymore not, it's, no it's, it's jeff uh, healy's jeff, thing yeah um that was late 2019 that was the end of 2019 it's probably the last and thing. i really think i really think they block off seats for all of us and i'm the only one that gets the email I think I really because yeah. that's multiple years that that's happened. Yeah, it's not like it th- says. I think they have my contact info and not yours. Sure, and that's because I'm always next to like five empty seats, or I smell bad. I don't. But one did or you the just other. write in that in that email? You know, this invite yeah. is good for six participants. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, there's al- almost consistently a picture of me in an empty row. In that. <laughs> Like a packed theater, and I always am sitting like, all right. I'll just never get over the fact that we got seated in front of Mark Hamill at yeah. that one year. Yeah. And and just at thinking back, TV, like, At the Spike TV Game Awards. I yeah. don't deserve to be sitting in better seats than Mark Hamill. Yeah. It was before any new trilogy, anything. Yeah. He was just doing the Joker voice, and that's about it. Yeah, this was like 2011. But it still felt fucked up. Like, yeah. I don't deserve to be sitting in better seats he, than Mark. Yeah, he, I... Felt the opposite, you know. <laughs> it was like you were Luke Skywalker thirty years ago. Oh, yeah. We, I was in the Tetris block five years ago. Yeah. Okay, and you've earned it. Same amount of people saw my video as saw Star Wars. Yep. So same you, level of you're cultural back there. impact. Now that he's made Force Awaken, he can sit in front. Okay, he's relevant yeah, again. Yeah, you know what? Easy come, easy go. But at that time, sorry, Mark. You sit behind Mega Sixty Four. That's <laughs> just the way it is. It's so funny because I I really do I remember he kind of went viral at that time because he was he tweeted about it that night that he is like shitty they nominate us for the show they invite us and then they tell us to go into some bleachers that aren't lit in the back you know like they I remember I remember sitting we were we were like front row in these in this seating area oh yeah Sean ran on stage with like Arcade Fire or something didn't no, he? no it was Black Keys I think. same thing yeah but. Uh, the we were right in front and i remember seeing james gunn come up and like oh okay holy back there all these actors got sent to the back i think we were just in front because at the time we were in cahoots with viacom right like we were part of the game trailers family so they put us up there james gunn was there for a lollipop chainsaw yeah 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 so there's they kept sending people there and i will never forget that that mark hamill tweet went viral but i I felt lucky that I was the one of the few people to see it in person because he got there and it was literally, I saw, I mean, we're right there. Mark Hamill walks up. I am like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, Luke Skywalker's right here. He walks up and he's like. <laughs> like you saw the whole pl- thing play like out. Larry David face. music play. Like that he was that, just yeah. like. That he had to walk up all these stairs to the back. Nosebleeds. Yeah. And then and then those tweets went viral. I was like, oh, how lucky was I that I got to see that unfold in his facial expressions. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah, but I, re- I remember, like, that we were definitely, like, in front because they knew, like, the people who produced that show we worked with at Game Trailers or whatever. 
You got the because I remember guys. I remember in front. It was like us and like people from like Hey Ash, what you playing and stuff. They yeah. were in the front, not these actors. Yeah, yeah. internet royalty. Um, get in line, old media kings. The new media rock stars are here to stay. I, I don't think I hate a phrase more than new media rock stars. Do you hear that phrase a lot? I think that that was marketed from some company. That was a YouTube channel. Yeah. it's. I think it's still around. I just hate that. I don't know why. It's like an earworm that got in my head, and now I, th- hmm. I like think about it on repeat yeah. and anger myself. Yeah. Stupid. Well, I'm sorry. I don't... It's like the word content. You know, I don't like that now. Yeah. Man, YouTube, I... it even says on YouTube, like when you're in your dashboard, yeah. it's like, here's your content. It's like, they changed happened? They changed the videos tab to content. Fuckers. That, that was like such a dark moment to me. That was like, man, it really... Because I don't use it in that... Con- I will re- refuse until my dying breath to use it. Like, I'm making some content for you guys. It New just content sounds out. so, like, lifeless. Like, it just, you know... I get the term content creator. You got, I got to submit there, but mm-hmm. even that, I'll, I'll spit through saying it. I remember... Uh, it was just recently Martin Scorsese talked about, he's like... He's like, I work with all these places now that just call my movies content. <laughs> and it's so sad. And, it, and then that, that cracked me up. I was like, yeah, favorite content creator, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> that is fucked. <laughs> but that's the nomenclature now. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, they changed that. And I, uh, that was a bummer. But um, I, I want to go check on Sean. Yeah. Was there anything else we want to? We need to like cover a few. We need to like work on a few things for something this week. So we might, maybe we need to duck out early. We oh, need to wait, call no. Sean. We need to work on some stuff. Yes, sir. Wait, someone I just owns. I want to make sure I got that in. Someone owns that NFT, right? I got a crap on deck that can choke a donkey. Did does that answer your question, Garrett? It does. Did that? Did they charge you to use that now? Sorry, about it. You might not be able to afford to play those anymore because I think we sold that NFT, right? <laughs> ah, sorry, I farted. <laughs> you got me. Ah, uh, no fart, non-fart, transactionable. I've got a he shakes. <laughs> Does he vibrate too? You know, I used to be uh, judgmental and highbrow and thought I was too good for funny things. But now that I'm older and more mature, I can just learn to laugh. I got a crap on deck that can choke a donkey. Oh, shit. He already said that one. Well. Coming to movie club. Not as funny the second time. Austin Powers 3. Gold mem- member. Actually, Fat one? Bastard is from Austin Powers two? Part 2, The Spy oh, Who Shagged Me. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Fuck. Fat Bastard, Mini-Me, um, Austin Powers, all the main characters are there. Austin Frau Fabrissina. Austin Powers is in it. <laughs> I remember, I remember yeah. the trailer for, and I thought this was really funny at the time. I remember when the trailer for Austin Powers came out, it pretended like it was Star Wars, because that summer... Was oh, yeah. The Phantom Menace was coming out. So it was a Star Wars is a big deal. And I remember the trailer for that started like it was in space, whatever. And then, it, oh, it's Austin Powers. And I remember the tagline. I thought it was funny in the trailer. It said, if you see one movie this summer, see Star Wars. If you see a second movie, see Austin Powers. You know, I thought that was funny. <laughs> and it's so funny because I remember the year that came out, my friends all liked Austin Powers better. Like, like that was the thing was like, oh, yeah, well, we can't compete with Star Wars. But I just, everyone I knew hated the new Star Wars when it came out, and it was, and then everyone at school quoted Austin, that second Austin Powers endlessly, and I was like, I feel like that backfired. Like, I feel like it was the reverse. But time has, I guess, favored Episode One better. I guess, I guess even that's debatable. Hell no. <laughs> See, that's quotable. Anyway. Episode one sucks. Yeah. What are you going to quote from that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Good night. I can't, yeah, yeah. What? Oh, okay. 